while before she said it was okay for me to go to New Orleans and get myself a diploma job. As I passed the sweltering shields, I looked out the frosty window of the air-conditioned bus, and I saw figures hunched over, pulling Johnson grass out of knee-high green stalks of sugar cane. I was looking for familiar faces, but all I saw was ass and elbow <laughs> for 27 cents an hour and pick up your paycheck at the Wagon's Fact store. Teach the old people 
to read and memorize pieces of the Constitution so they can pass the register voters test. Yes, that's right. Me and my militant friend Ali Mo is working at the center in the St. Bernard Housing Project where we live. We took a group of them old folks over there last week to City Hall. And I believe Moe was standing over the shoulder of this 80-something years old woman who was trying to register the vote for the very first time in her life. Old Granny was reading from a history book held by a white man. We hold these troops to be self-evident. But she wasn't exactly reading. She was memorizing the shit we talked about. <laughs> that all men are created equal. That they are endowed by a creator with certain inalienable rights. Yeah, right! I mean, scream. Just give the old folks the right to vote, you old witch. I mean, Logan is a walking beautician for the housing projects and the morticians. She do my mama hair, my sister hair, my cousin hair, my aunt hair, and everybody else ain't who ain't got much money hair. <laughs> so she has been in many kitchens, folks. She don't mind the heat. We gonna march from Shakespeare Park to City Hall every Sunday until we get this civil rights shit right. face the sheet, then use the boycott to share the front seat. Old timers at the old Canal Street station still rap on struggles of the first black bus drivers for the city of New Orleans. They tested the temples of a racist society with a white looking Negro that the bus superintendent selected from the back end of a push broom in the station's bathroom. Come to find out who the white looking Chester didn't like riding a bus. Or the spotlight of being the first. So he quit and went back to pushing the stick. The gambling white superintendent, pressured by the mayor to end segregation at the station, looked for a replacement to satisfy the anger of that nation. But there was no more white looking black men to say. So he came up with Freddie, who was brown skinned and kind of heavy in both the head and the belly. <laughs> Some white didn't take it like when he saw Freddie behind the bus that night. The buckshots missed as he stood taking a piss. <laughs> the superintendent then made it known that he was looking for colors with strong jaw bones. He sent supervisors with flyers to fish fries on the bayou. Should he even set one to a housing project named Desire? <laughs> Out of them ghettos came hard hitting Ben and soul brothers with Nick Dan skin. Sunball, polka dot red, blue, and rugged brown hue. Me too. Then got in new white shirts tucked into pressed black slacks. We resemble waiters wearing policemen caps. We are eager to serve. Come up, please. Or are you telling a white man what to do? Some people, time won't change them. Money won't change them. But a fully loaded steel plated coin change up upside the head will. The superintendent today is a dark skinned Afro American who was one of them bus drivers. So it was so neat when we faced the sheet to use the boycott to share the front seat. But to drive them, the solution almost took a revolution. Me and my bus driver friends have formed an activist group called the Black Bus Drivers Hustle. I've been marching a whole 
sole of my shoe. But I'll put cardboard in my stumps before I stop doing what I'm doing. We listened to Dr. King on a phone over until we can't take it no more. Then we go to pro we go out to the department stores and protest some more. While my son was being born, I was out singing freedom songs behind a new drawn case on in memory of Dr. Martin Luther King. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome the sorrow. They killed Dr. King off, but they can't never kill his voice. On the night of his death, black folks were burning buildings in New Orleans. Me and three of my bus driver friends was cruising around town in a new yellow Mustang. We saw a white boy walking on the sidewalk near the St. Bernard Housing Project, and we hollered, Hey, you bitch motherfucker. The white boy came out of his pocket with a pistol. And he started shooting, shooting, and running. We started ducking and trucking. 